Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux for Everyone, and welcome home. I'm Shickle, and this is the Wooting 2. Now, I have a lot to say about this keyboard, but I'm going to go ahead and first off say thank you to Wooting to, for sending this to me to review. I've been using this for the past few weeks as my primary keyboard, and I am thoroughly impressed. So let me break this down. I am traditionally a Razer guy. I love Razer mice and keyboards and headsets and laptops. That's typically what I've purchased. Um, I've had multiple Razer keyboards over the years, and it's just been kind of a thing that I go back to because I'm comfortable with it. And I enjoy the clickiness of like the Razer green switches, even though they're insanely obnoxious. And so I've gotten into a buying habit where I'm familiar with it, so I typically don't stray from it. But Wooting might have convinced me to move along a little bit. So I first heard of Wooting, let's say maybe two and a half, three years ago, and it was actually mentioned by Luke Lafreniere in a Linus Tech Tips WAN show stream. And I never really looked too far into it until more recently when I found out that they make optical keyboards. So that's important for a number of reasons. First and foremost, because it allows you to have more flexibility in the signal strength of a key press, which basically means you can use them as triggers, but it also means that you can basically use your keyboard as a controller. In racing games, you don't want to be able to steer either all the way left or all the way right. With a keyboard, it's always been traditionally difficult. It feels incredibly solid while not weighing a ton, which I, I have always kind of wondered why, despite being pretty much all plastic, Razer keyboards are insanely weighty and don't really have too much in the way of extreme features. Uh, there aren't a ton of macro settings either, and now recently or at least more recently to me, I wasn't familiar with this before, but apparently now you can change these things in Synapse, but that's where it gets tricky. So any of you guys who are familiar with Razer uh, peripherals will probably know that Razer Synapse isn't available on Linux, and we love Linux tools, right? We love to be able to use our hardware on Linux, and when that doesn't happen, it's, it's kind of disappointing. So I've always relied on softwares like the Open Razor project and the, I think it was the Polychromatic project to control the RGB settings of my mice and keyboards, which were Razor. But more recently, I found that I have also wanted to control the macro keys or maybe rebind keys, and that just hasn't been possible. And in comes the Wootility. With these Wooting keyboards, you can not only change the RGB on it, you can change the macros, you can rebind keys entirely, you can change the function layer, you have multiple profiles for not only the normal keyboard mode, but for analog mode. And you can do all of this on Linux. Uh, there's a couple of steps that you'll have to do to enable your system to allow you to do these things, or you can run it as sudo. I think either one works. And from there, you're off to the races. You can update the, the keyboard's firmware from the utility. You can change your RGB schemes. You can change your macros. It's all in there on Linux. And the reason I reiterate here is because it's really, really cool. So I'm going to get into what I feel about this keyboard. First and foremost, I love the way it sounds. Now, I got the blue switches, which are very, very nicely clicky. So I hope that translated through. I'm going to have to get some, some sound bites of just the keyboard on its own because to me, it's just the perfect amount of click. It's it's a very light click, and then the chassis absorbs a little bit of it, and it doesn't really like give you a really clunky feeling. Now, while I loved the clicky switches of, let's say, like the Razer Greens, it almost seems like the board passes through a lot of that to the table underneath, and it kind of feels like every hit reverberates throughout the desk, whether it be glass or wood or whatever. Whereas this chassis, I'm not entirely sure if this was intentional or not, 
but it seems to do a good job at nulling that and kind of bringing that in. So really the board is the only thing making noise. What I really like as well about the layout of this board is that above your 10 keys, you've actually got quick hot buttons to get to each of your profiles that you set in the utility. So by clicking A1, A2, A3, you can move between your analog modes. And of course, by switching the mode key, you can move between digital, which is a straight on and off, or back to analog, which I think is pretty dang snazzy. One of the things there is to note about this keyboard is well, that when you change settings, you can save them to the board. So no matter what machine you decide to use or where you decide to plug it in, your settings get retained. And I think that's really cool because something that I really appreciated about one of my previous boards, it was a Cooler Master SK650. Um, it's a low profile board that I bought because Dave2D said not to. And while it was definitely a frustrating board in some regards, one thing that was great is the entire board could be controlled purely by the board itself. But it also held the memory of the board on the board itself. And so this shares that particular benefit of having the memory stored on the board. I will say one thing that I like about Wooting, I I've hopped into their Discord and checked out their community, and one of the things that I really like is that the people there not only seem really neat, but uh, they, they seem very, very interested. Or the fact that this company not only creates that kind of community feeling um, that as Linux users we can relate to, uh, they seem very engaged, you know, and it's it's probably a super small thing, but I thought it was really cute in the utility when it talks about the serial number of the board, it'll say this is her serial number. So it's kind of like a personification of sorts. And that I think says a little bit about the company and that they care. Another thing that I really like about this board is on the back of it, they have three different slots to route the cable through, which is USB-C, by the way, as it always should be which can allow you not to have to drag the cable out through as much of the board that is necessary. Rather than it going straight out the middle or straight out of either side, you can route it through the middle, side, or other side. And I think that's really cool because I've had boards in the past where where the cable is is really inconvenient because there's a monitor stand there. And if the cable comes out there, it immediately has to get bent and moved around. These little details are more meaningful than a lot of people realize. And I really appreciate that they looked into that. I'd also like to give a shout out to this lovely wrist rest, which is a very interesting design. It's a flexible, rubber feeling, quite weighty actually, wrist rest. But I will say that it definitely does work incredibly well. And I kind of like that it's made out of this like rubber material because I imagine that it's going to be really easy to clean. And I think they thought about that ahead of time. Big advantages of this board. First and foremost, the analog switches. Obviously, that's the biggest feature of this. The fact that this board can be used as a controller. Now, I've tested it. In a couple of games so far, I've tested in uh, Forza, which was on Windows, and, but I've also tested it in F1. I think I have the 2015 version, uh, and that was on Linux, and Steam handled that beautifully. Another fantastic thing this board has going for it is the macro keys. Now, every single key on the board can be changed, but you can also have multiple of the same keys on the board. The fantastic thing about having multiple profiles saved to the board is that not only can you save multiple keys in different profiles as different macros, you could essentially have an entirely different keyboard layout with each mode. So if you're a Dvorak fan, you can have Dvorak mode and not even have to worry about that. You know, if you're a QWERTY fan, just keep it QWERTY, you know? But you don't even have to switch your profile entirely for that. If you want it just at the click of a button for certain things, you can also bind it to a function layer. Now the function layer are your function keys. So when you press function and let's say F6 or F7 on a board and you know how sometimes it'll adjust your lighting or it'll adjust your computer's volume or playback, well, this function layer can also be entirely rebound, which I think is super cool because you can have quick keys for like extra symbols. If you guys have seen our video talking about Linux laptops having Windows keys on them, then I'd also like to talk about the fact that these do not have Windows keys on them. In fact, they have Wooting keys on them and that is awesome. So we need to discuss tachyon mode. Now, 
Tachyon mode is supposed to essentially reduce the latency of every single key input as much as possible by stripping out any of the processing and basically sending the keystrokes as directly as they can to the computer. Now, what this essentially means is that while this mode does disable some dynamic RGB effects like uh, keystroke RGB or wave RGB or synchronized RGB, what it does do is allow you to get the quickest keystroke possible out of the board. While I am not a huge, crazy, like, esports professional gamer, when you get really, really good at something, or you are very, very invested in something, such as gaming, you want your tools to be as best as they can possibly be. Now, obviously, there are gamers of all sorts. When you need to react to things incredibly quickly, I mean, we, we have monitors that are pushing 240 plus FPS, so clearly quick reaction times are becoming more and more and more necessary, right? We don't just want fluidity, we want speed. And mice that are insanely sensitive, so you can move as quickly as possible, but as accurately as possible. Why shouldn't the keyboard be the same? And so that is the impression that I've got of this so far. Now, I will say I personally have trouble identifying how much of a difference this makes, as I am not that sensitive to keystroke speed, but I think that as I use this more and more, I'm becoming more familiar with the board, I am starting to see a slight difference in not only comfort, but in accuracy. My typing accuracy on this board has been a little better than it's been with the Razer keyboard, and I'm not entirely sure if that's just because the spacing is a little bit wider. This really is an incredible keyboard, and honestly, I think the only complaint that I'd probably have about this board would actually be the Wutility. Now, while it is amazing, and I'm super glad that it runs on Linux, the only problem that I have with it is that the layouts are a little confusing navigating through it. There's just so much, and I can't even really say this is a fault with the board. This isn't a fault with the Wutility either. This is a very, very flexible keyboard in terms of capability, right? It's designed to be customized as much as possible, right? You can set keys that when you press them, they type out a string of letters or they hit a string of keys as you press another key. So, so when I hit a number over here, I can have it press four keys instead of just the one. I really think that just going through it and turning things on and off and really digging in and figuring it out is going to be the best way to learn how it works for you, you know, figuring out whether you want tachyon mode or not, or figuring out how you prefer your analog switches to be, you know, like what sensitivity you want them at. Now, I, I have seen a couple of complaints online about how sometimes it's hard for people to get the analog mode, the keyboard, to be seen as an analog controller by some games. Thankfully, I didn't have that issue at all, so I think that might have been resolved. The awesome thing is, is that the Wutility is just as feature-packed on Linux as it is on Windows. The only exception that I've seen so far would be Razer Chroma. Yeah. Uh, these boards can sync with Razer Chroma. So if you have Razer peripherals and you've got your setup going, but you don't necessarily want a Razer board, right? You want this board. Well, you don't have to sacrifice that RGB control because with Razer Chroma, you can connect it and in Synapse, you can have it all synced up nicely. So the only reason I'm imagining that that doesn't exist on Linux is because, well, Razer Synapse and Chroma don't exist on Linux, right? I wasn't sure whether I was going to be impressed or disappointed, because I'm not super hard to please. I, I will grant that there are a lot of things that can make me really happy, like being able to use analog keys, because that's really cool. But I also wasn't expecting quite this much. This board was provided by Wooting, yes. If I pay for something, I'm inclined to feel as positive as I can about it, because I invested in it. Right? There's no investment here whatsoever. I am genuinely excited by this board because it not only is unique and powerful and flexible, like if you're a KDE user and you want an incredibly customizable uh, keyboard, like this thing would blow your mind. It's the perfect fit, I think, especially if you use KDE because that level of, of control is really, really gonna get you going. Another thing that came in the box on top of the keyboard was this plastic sheet with some switches on top and the keyboard cap and switch remover. 
So one side is for the caps, one side is for the switch. So you can actually take these switches out and replace them on the board itself, which I think is incredibly cool. But you can hear the clickiness of that little switch, which I think is cool. Now it did come with two switches that are replacements for what you have in your board, but it also comes with two different switches, which these ones seem to be like linear and soft. I'm gonna go ahead and press that. I think that the level of flexibility that this board allows you is a sign of how much they want their users to be comfortable when using their boards, right? It's not just a keyboard, it's a tool. And that tool is going to be as best as it can be for each user. And the way to do that is to make it flexible. And I think the fact that they do those kinds of things is also the reason why they include some extra switches and some different switches so you can try out the other ones. On top of that, something that I thought was really cool is the box itself. Now, it didn't come with a paper manual and they actually write a little letter. We helped you a hand and kept the super boring paper manual out. Instead, get started quickly by visiting wooting.io slash quickstart, which I think is awesome. It also says, you don't own a Wooting until you share it with others on our Discord or tag us on Instagram. Use this cutout to create a keyboard stand for those juicy pictures. That is right in the box itself. They've actually got a keyboard stand cutout so you can prop up your keyboard and post it and share it with their community and with them. Like, how cool is that? That they're actually not only just interested in giving you a keyboard, selling you a product, they want to know about it. They want to know what you think about it. And just like I was alluding to earlier, the impression that I get from Wooting is that they care. It's little things like this. Sure, maybe it seems insignificant, right? It's just a keyboard stand. But a company that doesn't really even care about that anyway, they're just selling you a product, isn't going to want to hear about it, right? Sure, free press, free, you know, people are like, hey, I got my new keyboard, I love it. Okay, sure, that happens. But they're encouraging you to get involved on their Discord with their community. It even comes with a postcard. And it says, greetings from Wooting. I hope you can see that well right there on the back. This is where the important part comes in. Without your support and contribution, we wouldn't be here today. That's why we owe you one. If you ever need a favor, write it down and send the postcard to us. We will do our best to make it happen. The fact that they've got people making Linux clients for these, heck to the yeah. I think I learned a lot, not only about what an amazing keyboard can be and what a good value a keyboard like this can be, but I also learned a lot about the company and the people behind it. And I think I learned that these things really matter, right? If you don't just want to make a product, but you want to make an experience out of that product, there's so much that this board can do. I don't even know how to get it all into one video. But I also want to thank the people in the Wooting community because I yeah, I will admit I've been Twitter stalking you guys and Discord stalking you guys. Uh, you guys are super cool. Um, I've seen some really, really helpful folks in there um, trying to offer solutions to people who had questions or just sharing the things that they loved. Thank you guys for building this with Wooting. And also thank you to everyone in the Linux for Everyone community and thank you to all the viewers for watching this video because if you didn't then this would be a little awkward.